Pedestal. We are here to prepare this brief video message for the 2014 LD Zers out there and their families. Uh, do you want to share a word of welcome first? Well, I want to say hello to all the LD Zers. You know, there are six programs this summer. Uh, New York, Colorado, we're going to be in Chicago. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, in the uh, Texas area, out in California, and Ciudad del Salver in Panama, and uh, uh, I'm going to try to make as many programs as possible. Can't make every one of them, but at least maybe a little stop over and overnight here and there just to get to know you, to greet you and meet you. But I look forward to seeing you. Exciting program this year. This video is for you and your parents. Ernesto, I know that the LDZ, there's definitely going to be a lot of students who did the great debate last year, but this year we're also going to have a lot of students like myself that we were first time NHIers through the LDZ. Tell us a little bit about the early history of the Institute. Well, just so you'll know and kind of contextualize what this organization is, I founded it uh, on the basis of the work of my parents in Houston. My mom and dad were youth workers in Houston and did amazing work at a little parque called the Zavala Park in a community called Magnolia. Dad later was assigned to uh, a little park, también un parque that was called Hennessy Park. And uh, I went to a little elementary called uh, De Zavala Elementary there in Magnolia. And years later, as I got older, I wanted to find out who De Zavala was uh, and, and why Latino uh, names were assigned. This name in particular was assigned to buildings or to educational institutions and came to find out that he was really an amazing figure in Texas history, uh, not only the framer of the Mexican Constitution, but had a lot to do with framing uh, the Texas Declaration uh, of Independence and had a lot to do with uh, the whole concept of personal freedom. And in 1836, when the Texas as a Republic was established, Lorenzo became the first provisional uh, vice president of the state of Texas. Interestingly, we, we made contact with his family years later, uh, and uh, he had a great, great grandson who was living in uh, Mexico City, but was also in France. And uh, we had a great conversation. And since then, we've had family members present to the students. Uh, we, two years ago, uh, there was a group of, uh, Lorenzo was married twice, uh, there was another part of his family who happened to be visiting the state capitol at the time that the LDZ was there uh, at the Texas state capitol, and they made a presentation. Of course, we honored them, but uh, that's the background on why it was called the LDZ. Uh, the National Hispanic Institute was a broadly used term. It's an educational institution. It's there to promote future leaders, and it's there to get kids to think differently about the future. This year at the uh, LDZ, what are going to be some of the chief learning goals that the students should be in store for? What, what, what should they be prepared for in terms of the learning that they're going to do? One of the things that I want parents to know and the students to know, and maybe they can talk about it at home, is that learning to navigate systems uh, is at the bottom of success for a lot of things people do. If you understand organized systems and how those systems interrelate with each other and how to navigate those systems, uh, you're going to do relatively well. Uh, the word in psychology is called field, uh, 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 field maze or maze brightness. And it was coined by a friend of mine named Dr. Arthur Friedman, is that being able to read the social landscape and being able to navigate yourself within that landscape uh, to a great degree predicts your success in the future. The LDZ is about introducing young men and women to that necessity in life. Uh, we do it in a legislative format, uh, no doubt about it, but uh, learning about the, 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 the mechanisms of government is not necessarily our goal. We're not a boy state and we're not a girl state. Learning how to manage and navigate systems is at the core 
of what we want young people to learn. This year's theme is called Envisioning the Future. Now, think about it for a moment, because when we talk about that, uh, what we're asking young kids to learn, uh, like yourselves, and parents, I want you to know what we're doing with your kids, is that we're asking them to envision tomorrow, 30, 40 years from now. Uh, when your children will be in their late 40s and in their 50s, when they will be in key leadership roles or they will be fully grown adults with their own families, perhaps even grandchildren, I don't know. But we're asking them to take a look at the world and in particular the United States 30, 40 years from now, 2050, when one out of every three Americans will be Latino. So envisioning the future means come prepared to write what we call community policy that will form the parameters or the boundaries for collective action by this dynamic, growing, and fast-moving Latino community. Is this what's meant when students uh, receive their information or are asked to write a proposal? Absolutely. You know, probably, Julio, the best way I can explain it is that in founding the National Hispanic Institute 35 years ago, I had to envision the future. Uh, I didn't form this organization for that moment in history, for the 1970s or 80s. What I wanted to do was begin to gather thought, social thought, uh, in, engage young people in seeing themselves 20, 30 years into the future. What's really funny, that's even today, we're getting first-time children of those early participants from the 1980s come to our programs. And it seems almost impossible that time can go by that far, or should I say that fast, and that far. But it does. And so what we want young people to do is to see themselves and see policy 40, 50 years from now. You know, when I was uh, in my uh, 16, 14, 15 years old, uh, we had telephones, but we didn't have uh, even color TV. For certain, we didn't have computers. Uh, there were a lot of things that exist today that were not even imagined back in the 1950s and early 60s when I was a young man growing up. We want our young people today to envision that same future. Where do they think we're going? Why? How are economies between, let's say, the United States and Latin America going to weld themselves together? How will language be, be treated? Well, all of us have to be bilingual. Uh, what will form the majority of our workforce. How will we get educated given the fact uh, that we have an exploding population? These are issues. What kind of leaders do we want? Uh, what kind of moral and ethical leaders do we need? Those are the kinds of thoughts that we're going to have to take into account as we plan for what certainly is going to come. Tomorrow is going to appear within a wink of an eye. Also, as part of the LDZ experience, students will be asked to read or at least become somewhat comfortable with your second book, Third Reality Revealed. What are the lessons of that book and what is the context that students were, were trying to have, get students to have before they arrive? You know, the reason that I wrote that book and any book that I have written has more to do with simple life lessons. Um, and, and the first book, Third Reality, Crafting a 21st Century Agenda. Uh, it's, uh, it's a series of standalone experiences that all of us are going to go through at one time in our lives. All of us are going to get older. All of us are going to be rejoiced with opportunity and disappointed in victory. All of us will regrettably encounter tragedy in our lives, or possibly the loss of a loved one in our families. All of us are going to go through those journeys. Third Reality Reveal had a lot to do with personal success and actually the success of a community because at the end of a day, at the end of the day, there is no real formula for success outside of certain human elements like the will to, 
to endure, the will to stay with your dream, uh, the ability to imagine, uh, the, op the ability to dream and to craft and to see yourself as an important player in the life of the community in which you live. And the other one has a lot to do with faith. And when I talk about faith, of course it includes religious faith. All of us have a basis for that. But beyond religious faith is faith in self. How, how many times in the history of, of NHI uh, did I almost come to, to giving up outside of having faith in the young people whom I knew? How many times uh, did I stay up all night just attempting to imagine uh, how many times was it simple will that got me up early in the morning and allowed me to work 18 hour, 20 hour days? Oftentimes, it's how often you hit that rock, how many times and with what kind of determination you hit that rock until that rock cracks. And one of the things that we want young people to learn through the LDZ is that life is not easy. Life is very challenging. Life is not necessarily a gift except for those who have imagination, will, and a lot of faith in what they're doing. And that book talks about the dynamics and chemistry of those particular principles. And Ernesto, there's not much that an LDZ -er can prepare or train for or practice before arrival, but they can certainly have some conversations at home. Uh, you talked about the theme that you want them to think about. Uh, we talked about the book. We talked about some of the skills. How would you recommend that an LDZ -er prepare at home with their family? What kind of conversation should mom and dad trigger to maybe get them in the, the frame of thinking for this summer? Well, I think there are a lot of things that are symbolic about the LDZ. Uh, you know, uh, going to an LDZ for a, a lot of young people will be their first time away from home. Mom and dad, let me just help you understand something. Your children are leaving, and if they're going to be juniors uh, this coming September of 2014, they will be 24 months away from leaving college. If they're emerging seniors, mom and dad, I know you don't like hearing this, but they're 12 months away from leaving home and going away to college. And once that happens, it's a forever. Yeah, they'll come home and visit, but things will never be the same again. LDZ is a preparation for that inevitable transition to go from, from living at home, living in comfortable, loving environments to entering the adult world. Now, what we want to do, mom and dad, is surround your children with the networks and contacts that are going to encourage them, not discourage them. By nature, they're going to enter a world in which they're often referred to as being at risk or being minorities or people of color. Those are terms that we do not support in the culture of NHI. We want them surrounded by friends who are compelled and are driven to succeed. And we want them to hang around and develop friendships with young men and women with shared values about higher education and about doing well for themselves. So the LDZ is that initiating point of change in family. We want them to know what are they gonna tell their grandma when they leave? How are they gonna prepare their little brothers and sisters when they leave? What are we expecting from them as future leaders? And what are the skills they need to lead effective lives? Not only as professionals, but sometimes we overemphasize that. But what do we expect from them as leaders? Do we want them to leave home and never come back? Absolutely not. We want them to come back home. But in this case, to be the owners, to be the rule makers, to be the people that run communities and entire societies. I know that if students do very well this summer, they will be automatically selected or pre-qualified for Celebración 2014. And again, some, uh, some of the folks watching may not know what that is. Could you give us a little bit of insight and uh, what to look forward to in the fall? Well, you can look for a great time at the Omni as a five-star hotel in Dallas, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. In every program, whether a student is a freshman, 
a sophomore or just completed their sophomore or junior year, uh, or as a CWS or a person who's an emerging high school senior, um, those who really do well get invited from among the 3,000 kids that participate through our 13 programs to come to Cele, Celebración, for an extended four-day period of continued preparation. Now, what is the purpose of, of Celebración? It's a signature program to provide the world with a showcase of our best young minds. It is an amazing gathering of highly intelligent young people. It now puts our young people from local to national to state. Now we give them an international a stage for further in their social networks, further in their friendships and contacts. Let me put it to you this way. More than likely, 50 years from now, having relationships and contacts throughout the hemisphere, throughout Peru, Argentina, Mexico, La República Dominicana, Puerto Rico, Panama, donde quiera, it doesn't matter. Our young minds, our young kids will be more international than domestic. Our economies will require that. Business development will require that. It will require them to speak both English and Spanish and handle both culturals. So we're going to be bicultural and bilingual and able to navigate the landscape of both worlds. We're going to be the people who glue things together. Celebración starts that process, but it goes one step further. What Celebración really does is that it introduces students to the whole concept of social entrepreneurship. And what does that mean? Sounds like a big word. And it's not. It means learning to use imagination. A lot of imagination to imagine new solutions to complex old human challenges. So it allows the student to take a look at the social dynamics uh, of our societies as they seem to be emerging and begin to prepare through their own imaginative and inventive ways, ways of engaging the Latino community in its own self-change and its own self-advancement and in its own self-progress. Final word out there for this month before we uh, embark on the LDZ month of June. Anything else, any final word? Get ready for a lot of fun. Get ready for, for the idea of being on your own. Uh, don't expect a lot of direction, except when it comes to your safety and security. We're always going to protect family values and everything you do. Get used to that. We know what your parents expect from us. Girls in the girls' dormitories, boys in the boys' dormitories, me in the middle with a shotgun. I'm always kidding kids about that. Have a nice, clean, good time. Uh, you're going to make friends that are going to last you entire lifetimes. I know LDZers that met uh, is in, the, in the 1980s that today at 45 and 48 years of age continue to be the closest friends. So you're going to meet your life partners and friends and young people with whom you want to stay in touch with, not only throughout this country, but throughout this hemisphere. It's going to be a grand experience. You're going to meet some great people. And let me mention to you right now, there's a guy that's doing the interview and his name is Julio Cotto. And to me, he's one of the, one of the best developed young bright minds I have run into in a long, long time. He too is going to be on site to be helpful, to encourage you, but also to provoke you to think critically and to think strategically and to think futuristically. Hey, we look forward to seeing you, mom and dad. You come by on a weekend to be with your children, to celebrate uh, their victories and to celebrate the good times that they had, but in particular, to celebrate what they learned about themselves. Thank you for the opportunity to visit with you, and I hope this video has been helpful to whatever questions you may have or to whatever you anticipate your children should be involved in. Thank you very much.